So early on, kids experience um, push out. It's interesting to me, I spend a lot of time in prisons. I've been going into prisons since 1975. And most folks in prison will talk about somewhere between the third and the fifth grade, or at least by eighth grade, teachers started to say to them, you know you're not that smart boy. You know you're never gonna measure up. Child, you know you're not gonna make it. You just might wanna learn to do something with your hands because you have no other future. Or they talk about being in a circle and being asked, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And saying, veterinarian or whatever. And then being told, no, 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 no. You might wanna think about bricklaying construction, something that suits you a bit better. Um, the racism in this country is imprinted in our public education system. Jonathan Kozel has written a stunning book calling it apartheid, that we have resegregated schools, that we have deepened the divides, and that's both by race and by class. And so largely I'm from the South. Um, it's easy to see there, but it's not absent from Allentown or any other city in this country that those who can afford largely white, middle and upper income folks have abandoned the public education system. And we have consigned kids from impoverished commun communities, especially kids of color, um, to ineffective school system. That begins the push out, right? So you have, often have white middle income teachers teaching kids of color from impoverished communities constantly labeling, judging, and saying, you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna make it, you're not gonna make it. And then doing things like I was talking about earlier today, uh, my husband teaches public school, eighth grade. He has an eighth grader who has just been so far on the edge and in the last four weeks has just doubled effort, just I mean, incredible. Like, you could just celebrate every single day that the kid made it through the school without some incident, uh, that he made it through the day really doing well on some of his uh, academic work. And he got suspended for being out of uniform, out of school uniform. I mean, what are we teaching kids? What do we value? Um, and so I think th that we have systematically found ways, and it's a combination of the George Bush version of Leave No Child Behind, which is markedly different from the Children's Defense Fund motto that came first, long before George Bush, we don't get royalties. But we had a Leave No Child Behind, and we meant it. That Leave No Child Behind punishes schools where kids don't perform well. So schools lose resources, which means that schools have an incentive for kicking kids out if they don't measure up on the test scores, because the whole school um, is, is punished has dire consequences because of it. So you start there and then you begin to criminalize. So you think up things that used to get my kids, I have five boys, get my kids study hall time, detention time, right? It's a crime now, truancy is a crime. And uh, you have to wonder, why don't we ask kids, what's going on so you're not showing up in school? What would make it easy for you to, what, what, what would encourage you to show up at school but instead, it's a juvenile crime. And so in Tennessee, I know in Allentown you lock up parents, but in Tennessee we lock up young folks. We put them in handcuffs and we put them in jail overnight. They stand in a courtroom and they are yelled at and then they spend at least overnight, sometimes longer, in jail. Um, and so we've intensified the damage. We've repaired nothing that was wrong. We've not identified or named any of the problems. We've not offered any solutions. We simply intensify the trauma that these kids experience. And once a kid goes into juvenile detention, they are 50% more likely to end up in adult prison because now they're trapped. We have another young man we're working with in Nashville, African-American, 10th grade, rising 10th grader. In the second grade, he was accused of touching a white girl's bottom. He didn't do it, said he didn't do it. Nobody else saw him do it. The girl said yes. He was expelled from school, second grader, expelled from school. Every year he goes back into the public school system, he has to sign a discipline, uh, it's called a behavior contract, and it means if he has three minor infractions, he brings a cell phone to school, he is out of school uniform, um, he disrupts in any way, which can be anything from bumping into someone in the hall to yelling. Uh, he's out. He's expelled from that school. So every year he begins the year, someone sits down with him and says, we know who you are. We expect problems from you and there are special circumstances for you even to be allowed in the front door. We have to figure out how to create an environment 
that um, creates an atmosphere where kids are safe, where kids are loved, where kids are affirmed, where kids are invited to exercise their gifts, to do critical thinking, to do problem solving, and to know that they're in a space that believes they can not only learn, they can excel. They can be leaders. They can become change agents in their own community. Our public schools have not only not done that, but we have criminalized um, kids and so just push them right out of school and into prison. If a kid can't read at the fourth, eighth, or twelfth grade if they last that long, what are they going to do? More than 80 percent of the African-American young folks in public schools and Latino in public schools cannot read at grade level, fourth, eighth, and twelfth grade. Um, it means we're consigning them to political, social, economic debt. There are no options for them. You go into the prison system and the average reading level is usually somewhere between the fifth and the seventh grade. Uh, and prison is at least, often more, but at least three times more ex as expensive as public education. Um, so your neighboring state, New Jersey, the only state in the country to agree to offer four credit college courses in every prison. And national studies have proven that one four-credit college course reduces recidivism by up to 46 percent. You got to ask why? Because they learned English? Because they learned no. It's because they suddenly see themselves as human beings with gifts. They begin to imagine a different world. Why don't we do that in the third grade, in the fourth grade, to really invite kids to see who they are and to imagine the possibilities for their life and the life of their community? Um, cradle to prison pipeline is real stuff. Uh, for kids from impoverished communities, especially kids of color.